Hey family, welcome. Marshawn Olanio here, your favorite life and relationship strategist. And I help Christian women that are married or in long-term relationships to stop feeling disconnected and unloved and shift you to feeling heard, understood, and appreciated. Now we're going to talk about signs your relationship is slowly falling apart. Now you may be thinking, why would my relationship fall apart? Or why would I not know or even see when my relationship is falling apart. But the truth is most people are not aware when their relationship is slowly but surely falling by the wayside, falling apart, getting ready to be dumped or broken up with or even a divorce to happen. And it's because of the little things. You're not paying attention to the little things. And anytime the little things start to pile up, right, it becomes, it becomes a huge thing. So what you want to do is to literally start paying attention to everything that I mentioned here today, but especially the things that you are doing. I want you to literally think about how you show up in your relationship and the things that you can absolutely change based off what we speak about here today. So the first thing is you two do not talk anymore. So you know when you guys first met and you guys used to stay on the phone for hours Hours upon hours, maybe somebody even used to fall asleep on the other end, or maybe that was yourself. And you would just talk for hours about any and everything. It was so much fun, so much laughter, so much getting to know. It was exciting. You have butterflies in your stomach all the time. And all those things have just gone away. And a lot of the reason why these things have gone away is because we have allowed or we allow things to pile up. For conversations that you need to have, you stop having them or you just don't have them for fear of something, fear of the relationship ending, fear of um, you, you never knowing how the partner or spouse is actually going to take what it is that you need to talk about, or you just being very, very frightened about having that particular conversation. Like, is it is this or will this mean? that this is over. So you guys stop talking because of all the things that are happening or have happened in your relationship. And as I mentioned before, it's usually the small things. And so we start off small and then this thing gets bigger and bigger, but it's not really this thing. It's not really this thing. It's actually a multitude of tiny things that are now piling up to become this big thing in your relationship. And so you stop talking about how to fix these things based off of your partner's reaction. Well, you can't worry about the reaction, honestly, because the only way to move forward in your relationship is to actually do something about the thing that needs fixing. The only two people that can change your relationship around are you and your partner. That's it. The outside forces, the people that we tell our stories to, the people that we discuss our woes with, they cannot help you. So putting on your big girl panties, putting on your big boy drawers, and actually going to have the conversation that is scary, that is going to be tough, will turn your relationship all around. It will actually turn your feelings around that you're having um, about your partner as well. And the relationship overall. That insecure feeling that you have about your relationship will actually start to fall by the wayside because now you are doing the work, which is having the tough conversations. The more you have the tough conversations, the better the communication is in your relationship. And also, it increases the understanding that each of you have for one another. So the talking has actually started to decrease within your relationship. The second thing is that quality time is now a thing of the past. Because you guys have stopped talking about the critical issues, the critical problems, you haven't found solutions to them, things are completely always swept under the rug. They're never resolved. So because of that, you and your partner equally 
don't really want to spend the quality time that you once thrived, that you once was eager to experience with your partner. You don't want to do that anymore. And it's because the conversation, the communication, the talking has fallen by the wayside. You have yet to make your relationship a priority because it's starting to get tough. And maybe in your mind, you thought that it was supposed to be easy all the time. But it's never going to get easy if you don't get past these small bumps and humps that actually becomes mountains in your relationship. So the quality time is being thrown by the wayside as well. All because the conversation, the communication, the talking has dissipated or disappeared within your relationship. Number three, you stop trying, okay? Again, it goes back to the communication, right? goes back to that talking. Because you guys aren't talking, now there's no quality time, which leads to the third point, right? I don't even care. I'm not trying anymore with him or with her. I don't care. I'm not trying with the relationship. I'm not trying with him. He's so stubborn. She's so stubborn. I'm tired of having the same conversation over and over again. Well, think about this. That conversation that you're tired of having over and over again, was there ever a solution? Or was it just something that you talked, you yourself talked about? Your partner listened. He or she said they were going to come back to the question, to, to, to this particular instance, conversation, but never have. And so now you're holding on to that thing. And because you're holding on to that thing, again, quality time by the wayside conversations, understanding, communication by the wayside. So naturally, quality time will also be by the wayside. Number four, because all of those other things are happening, now you're starting to seek emotional support outside or elsewhere. It could be from someone of the same sex. It could be someone of the opposite sex. But because you are no longer connecting with your partner, now you are seeking this emotional support, this emotional connection, which is one of the factors that's going to help you to bond to one another. Because none of the talking, none of the communication, the quality times are um, the quality time is out the window. All of that plays a part in the way that you are um, seeking your emotional support. And that's why you're starting to seek your emotional support elsewhere. Because the connection is, lo is loose now. It's a loose connection. You're basically going through the motions of the day, day in and day out. You're going through the motions, but you're not really connecting to your spouse like you once did. Right? Does that make sense? Let me know. Let me know. Does that make sense? Number five, you see your spouse as your competitor, especially since the four things that I just mentioned are happening. Now, number five, you're seeing your spouse as your competitor instead of as your teammate. And anytime we have a competitor, we're not trying to align and do things together. We're trying to figure out how to do better, right? How to win. We're not trying to communicate. We're not trying to work together like teammates do, like people in healthy relationships and healthy marriages know. We know that it takes the team in order to move the relationship and marriage forward, to keep the family dynamic together. And so if you're unaware of all of these things, now I am going to ask you the question, which is, what are you willing to do to change your relationship all around so it stops slowly falling apart? Because this is not something that happens overnight. It is the small things that we do day in and day out that determines the outcome of our relationship. Because whether you realize it or not, you are creating the relationship that you're a part of today, including the relationship with yourself. 
So if you're not taking care of yourself, no wonder you're frustrated all the time. No wonder you're annoyed. No wonder your cup is no longer running over because you're depleted. Right. And that same analogy applies to your romantic relationship. You are constantly creating the relationship that you are currently in day in and day out by the things that you do day in and day out. So how will you turn your relationship around? What are you willing to do differently to turn your relationship around? Now, of course, if you need any help with this, reach out to me. Send me a message. Get on my scheduling. Um, um, get, get, excuse me. Get your name on my schedule so we can have a conversation. It's a free coaching call, 30-minute coaching call, and I will help guide you on what your next step should be. Definitely reach out to me. I am Marshawn Olanio, your favorite life and relationship strategist. And my mission is to decrease the divorce rate while simultaneously increasing the marriage rate. Won't you join the mission? Let me know. Let me know if you're ready to join the mission. And if you are serious about changing the trajectory of your relationship all around. I love you guys and there is nothing that you can do about it. And I will talk to you very, very soon. Bye.